Uh, back to language, just for one moment. <laughs> I spent a month in Paris when I was 21, and I used to go to this... this okay, yeah. <laughs> oh, there's floods there, by the way. Just make sure you wear boots. Uh, right <laughs> um, I used to go into this bakery, and, and I didn't know any French, or I didn't make an effort. This is just the importance of language. It's so true that this is brought up. I'd go into the bakery, and I would act, like get a croissant and a coffee, and I would use only English. And I thought the people were so rude who ran the shop. They looked at me like, you know, here's your croissant, here's your coffee. And finally I thought, I gotta change this up. I gotta, I gotta actually make an effort here. And I learned about as much French as Robbie uh, just said. <laughs> and, and only that, just like, bonjour, uh, croissant s'il vous plaît, merci beaucoup, au revoir, they started giving me croissants. <laughs> just like, here, take it. Thank you. For making an effort to come here uh -huh. and speak our language. Yeah. What? Just yeah, just that. Yeah. It's really to make an effort around the world. <laughs> what I, when I say about giving respect to get respect, yes. you're, you're, in their, you're in their country. I mean, it doesn't take a lot to, to learn a couple words. They know you don't speak French, you know, as your native tongue, but it's the effort. Yeah. And it's the fact that you try, and then it goes a long way everywhere across the world, you know? Like Robbie trying the southern accent. <laughs> the people, the people of southern America. You gotta give a little. Down home in Texas, they appreciate oh, yeah. that. <laughs> or really make an, an, an assessment of who they are. Um, I always, always love that story for that very reason, because you have to look beyond what's on the surface. And I think a lot of times in our society we overlook that. So I think that's my favorite one. I think it's really important. An important message. Bless you. You know. Bless you, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Did I say it right? similar characters in the fact that they're both very courageous, uh, they're supportive of their friends. I think that boys would have a long way to go to have as much tenacity as, as Lancelot. Um, but I think if, if, even if they met or if they got into like a tussle, <laughs> which one? If they, if they just met and like went on a journey together? What? If, if they met, if they met, or if they got into like a, a, a scuffle of some sort or something like that. Maybe. Okay. He's asking you to kind of write this with him right now. Right. You're now a willing participant. <laughs> I think right now, for where Boyd is now, if if uh, Lancelot and, and Boyd met up, I think Lancelot would uh, neutralize him pretty quickly because he's got the skills. How are you gonna ask a question not pay attention? To pay the bill. Pinocchio and Rumpel is forcing Pinocchio to tell the truth. So how did that work? How did the nose work? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I remember. <laughs> how, did, how did it work? What do you mean? Yeah, like, how did, how was it, like, was it special, what kind of, like, special effects? How did they have the nose grow? Oh, yeah. It's uh, done in, in uh, after the fact. Oh. So there's nothing in the practical filming of it that is, is uh, you know what they did have, actually? They actually brought, they made a wood nose in three different lengths, so I could just see what they intended to do. And then they just showed it to me, and it was basically like a piece of wood, like, oh, okay. And then up to a piece of wood this big. And, uh, and maybe they used that on a double to sort of like get some focal lengths for the camera. Um, but anyways, it's just straight up acting like my nose is growing and it's painful. And because, you know, they, they want it to be painful, those <laughs> cruel people. <laughs> so, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Are you nervous to play such an iconic character, especially because they made him evil in the show, or were you more excited to have a different spin on Peter Pan? Uh, yeah, I think both. Uh, it was obviously very daunting to kind of go into a role that was so iconic, and you 
kind of go, well, better not mess this up, this would be, this would be poor. But um, no, yeah, as I said before, it was really exciting to be able to go in, clean slate, do something totally different than, than whatever it's done before. But yeah, I mean, the first, I, I always find that the first uh, scene that you play in that role um, is always very defining because it's, it's not like you're doing a play and you might have one night where you do something a little bit different. Oh, the next night, maybe I'll try this a little bit differently. Uh, with film and TV, you shoot a scene and you do it, you make a choice in your mind, you shoot the scene and then it's done. You can't just say, you know, a day later in episode three, oh, I'm going to totally change the way of the character because then it would not be consistent. So I remember the first scene, is, it was in episode two, where I was, um, uh, I think I was with uh, J-Mo uh, doing, doing the scene. And uh, the first, uh, that was the first time that you really kind of saw Pan as Pan consistently. And I thought, you know, whatever I do now is going to stick with that character for the rest of the time. Um, and that, moments like that were quite daunting, um, where you really had to go, okay, this, this part is uh, significant and it is serious. And, you know, once you get that out of the way, we can build on what we put into it, but you can't change it entirely. So that would be a probably the daunting moment for me. Awesome, thank you. Thank you. I'd like to go to the loo. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Um, there, were, there were plenty of wonderful moments for me. Um, just being to work with, getting, being able to work with a fantastic ensemble cast uh, really just does it for me. Being able to come into work every day and knowing that we're gonna get something wonderful out of the day. You're always laughing, you know, uh, there are some incredible comedic minds I find on that on that set. And the crew has such a wonderful sense of humor on Once Upon a Time that you can say almost anything and <laughs> it, would be, it would be funny in one way or another. Um, so they're very comedic in their political correctness. I'll say that much. <laughs> Do you guys want to... <laughs> Go ahead, baby. My name is Megan, and this question is for all of you. And who is your favorite person to work with, and why? Um, for me, it really would have to be everyone that I work with on the show. This kind of, honestly, this kind of ties into the last question when you asked, um, what was the favorite, what was my favorite day on set? And I've been asked this question before on a lot of different projects and a lot of different interviews. And I can honestly say that once upon a time, it still goes down for me as my favorite filming experience. Oh. Like Robert said, the crew is great, the producers are great, the cast is phenomenal, shooting in the city of Vancouver is amazing. So every aspect of it was fun. And every day that I got to work with any of, of the actors, was fun for me. I didn't really have a favorite because I was just loving the whole process. And I really had a euphoria each and every time I walked into work. So to tie in both of those questions, that's my answer to both. Something that was very memorable is the first time, uh, I, I guess it was after season one had started airing or either was entirely finished. And I, I came to film at in the town, Storybrooke. I'm forgetting the name of the, the actual. Steve, Steve's there. And uh, I got out of a, a, a van and walked down the street and then there, there were kind of like some, some, some fencing. And on the other side of fencing was 100, 150 fans who had come from all over to see this town and to see some filming take place. And I've never done a, uh, like a sitcom with a live studio audience and I haven't done theater since my early 20s. And so it was really interesting to, to, to shoot a scene with uh, people who had come from different places. I, I went up and talked to people later on. I found some people from New Zealand, some from Australia, some from the States. And people had traveled so far to see and meet some people that had, you know, not at all dissimilar from right now, had come from far to, to have an experience with the people from the show because because this story and, and these actors and these writers had touched them. And that's a really special experience. And that's when I, I think I, I, I really had an understanding of, of how deep this show resonates 
in people's hearts and minds. And to, to, to know that anytime we know, in, in, in any aspect of our lives, we know we're a part of something that is, that is special and, and moves people uh, and inspires people, that's uh, a, a beautiful thing to be a part of. And I was very appreciative uh, of that experience. That was, that was eye-opening. Okay, Ben, can we get uh, that mic more in our monitors on the stage because it's hard to hear. I need to get more of that audience mic in the monitors on the stage, please. Thank you. Hello, my dear. Hello. I mean, since we're on the subject of birthdays, what is the designated month of Regina's birthday? Oh, no one in the audience, please. The designated month of Regina's birthday would be February. That is correct. All right, so you have two points. Very good. Let's give our experts a hand. They're doing well. All right, hello. Uh, in season one, where was the first Mickey Mouse found? In season one, where was the first Mickey Mouse found? No hope from the audience. Here we go. Nothing like those cues right on the gun, right on the money, just like... I know, that's, that's, the, uh, that's the tech union. Uh, being uh, distant with me again. Can't be two places at once. Yes, you can, for God's sake. How can you be in two places at once when you're not anywhere at all, man? Got it? Okay. Uh, what's our answer? In gold shop? It was actually. Up, 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 up. Just yes or no? No. No. No, it wasn't in gold shop. Yes, the first Mickey Mouse. Where was the first Mickey Mouse found? In the mines where the dwarfs were working is correct. You got it. Two, two, count two others in your table. Good job. The new right, markets, guys, right uh, now, uh, they're Cisco, doing the Once Upon a Time uh, auctions. Toronto. So me and Duran just chilling, Duran. And, just uh, thank you. Not sure, but we're definitely going to And we did a Q&A earlier, like a trivia. We would go to Texas if not for Texas, oh, Texas. Joran got to meet um, Regina and Selena yesterday for the photo op and for the autograph signing. Okay. Yeah, it was like, yeah. That's the right now. Okay. The new Emily's over there. They wish her a happy birthday. So she's going to meet us tomorrow. Right now Right, ten dollar for two weeks, ten bucks. Get your ten to twenty. Twenty to thirty. Thirty to forty. Because I'm going to prevent myself from having a headache from 50. last year. Forty to wear fifty. Wait, this time I'm Forty once to wear fifty. Forty twice to wear fifty. Sold forty dollars. Sorry. Thank you, wonderful band. How great are these? Round of applause, these talented musicians. Happy Sunday, everybody. You? I love you too. Alright, as it's Sunday, let's get straight down to business, shall we? It's your show, I'm just here to support. <laughs> so you call the shots, Alright. To the left, to the left. Hiya. Um, I'm Nicole, and... Hello, Nicole. Um, in season one, when you talked about the Scooby-Doo gang, and I was wondering if you could tell us who's in it or what goes down. There's some. Um, theory said it's a bit emoji only, but I don't know if you could explain. No, do you know what it was, was, um, because there's a cast, um, I mean, sort of, specifically just, just a bunch of us, the, the regular cast, um, often there's decisions we have to make about Christmas presents or things for the crew or something like that, so I said to Lana, you know what, you should start a, you should start a WhatsApp, uh, just so that we can all have a round robin, you know, so that if it's the Christmas gift or whatever it is, and um, she was like, yeah, that's a good idea. So she invited everyone to a WhatsApp and then um, it just got titled the Scooby-Doo Gang because we're a bit like the Scooby-Doo Gang. Um, and so, so that was it really. It was sort of um, just one of those little funny things and occasionally we share a few giggles on there. So that's how we became the Scooby-Doo Gang. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Late to the wedding, I have to go back to New York. But of course, one of my shenanigans was you. Of course. So Robin Hood, but where is the unicorn, and why isn't that your picture? I, 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 I don't know, is the honest answer to that question. I will try and locate a picture of a unicorn and put it up forthwith. <laughs> that sounds good. All right, thank you. 
Uh, hello. Hi, Sean. Hi. Um, my question is from season three. Um, basically, if Hook and Emma did not go through that portal and Robin and Regina did, what do you think would have happened? Oh, gosh. I, I, I'm not very good at these kind of things because um, the show's so complicated, I don't understand it half the time anyway. So when you... <laughs> So when you put a hypothesis of, if this hadn't happened and that would have happened, I just, I just go, ah, <laughs> I have no idea. I guess if we hadn't gone through the portal from what Back to the Future has taught me about the space-time continuum, <laughs> is if you go back in time and change even the smallest thing, it can have massive effects and make the whole universe collapse. So either Robin would still be alive or the universe would have collapsed. It's one of the two, I'm not sure. <laughs> Maybe both. Maybe Robin's alive, but the universe has collapsed. So, I guess that means Robin's dead also. Thank you so much. That's the best astrophysics I can do on a Sunday morning, but thank you for your question. Enjoy the next few minutes with one of my favorites, the most delicious, Rebecca Mina! Hi, 
I might stumble through this question. Um, okay. I'm okay, I feel like half of the relationship between Rumpel Steelskin and Belle was based off of Belle trying to fix Rumpel. What would have happened if she would have succeeded really early on, like maybe a few episodes after he met? Would they still be together? Hmm. Yeah, that's, that's a good point, because yeah, what recently he's like, you know, you, you like me because I'm who I am. I don't know. I really don't know. I kind of don't think there's a, a clear-cut answer for that, but maybe not. You know, maybe, I think, I think definitely part of the draw, I mean, come on, it has to be, is, you know, his dark side and is that sort of, that, that dangerous side that she's probably not even willing to admit herself fully. Yeah. But I'm glad they are. I think it's a really cool relationship. I think she needs to stick to her guns a little bit more. Stand up for herself a little bit more. But, you know, I kind of think if, um, you know, wherever they're headed with, um, with their child, that's going to bring in some really interesting components to that dynamic. They don't really, you know, she's got she's to be the strong one there, so it's cool. Thank you. Thank you. Yet for next season, so I, I can't really answer that, but I, 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 I will be out of that box. I can tell you that. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Emily. How are you? I'm good. I just want to say it's such an honor to see you and meet you today. So welcome to New Jersey. Thank you. Um, I only have a, a small um, two-part question. My first part was, what was it like exploring more of Belle and Gaston's past? Oh, it was great. It was great. He, he was great. Wes, who, uh, lovely guy. He great. Was sexy. Yeah. <laughs> he, he was great. We had a lot of fun. And it was great. Yeah, we, had, we hadn't gone back since really, you know, skin deep. Which mm -hmm. didn't even show that much of, of their past. So I, I had a great time uh, with that. Just, you know, a little bit more of an entree into to Belle's psyche and where she's coming from. And, you know, helped, helped me learn more about her personally, too. Yeah. And my second question is, um, if you were allowed to wear one of Belle's costumes today, which one would it be? It is raining. Well, I meant yours. <laughs> oh, it is. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, what would I wear? I don't know, because it's a convention, I would probably like go for it and wear the wedding dress. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Really hot. <laughs> okay. Hi, um, I was wondering with Bell's 